and welcome to our A to J Author new user webinar for May. This is Jessica Frank. I'm A to J Author's project manager. So usually I do a tip for authoring um, each month based on questions that have come up or interactions I've had with authors. But instead of an authoring tip today, I have a request. We're thinking of ways to improve the A to J DAT with an eye towards a potential TIG application. So if you've ever worked with our A to J document assembly tool, the backend tool that creates the templates, um, we call it the A to J DAT, please um, spend just a couple of minutes, maybe during this webinar or afterwards, thinking of ways that we can improve it for you. So is there something specifically that's lacking that you like in other document assembly tools that we don't do? Is there a feature that we currently don't have that something else can do that you'd like to see in A to J author? Is there a blocker to your workflow that you'd like to be fixed? Some bug or something that you always have to do a workaround to make work that would be that you would be more likely to use the A to J DAT if it was fixed? I'd love to hear. Basically anything, any way that we can improve the DAT, I'd love to hear about it from you. You can always email me directly at jessica at cali.org. So if you have time in the next uh, couple of days, I'd love to hear anything that we could do to make the DAT better for you. But today, specifically, we're going to talk about repeat loops. We'll cover what repeat loops are, why you'd want them or need them in an interview, the two ways to create repeat loops in A to J Author, and how variables are the same and different in a repeat loop. So what is a repeat loop? It's sometimes also called a repeat dialog, so I use both of those here. I generally call it a repeat log, but you might hear repeat dialog. It is a series of questions that will display to the end user multiple times based on the end user's input. So why would you need it or why would you want it? You use repeat loops if you're trying to gather the same type of information multiple times from the end user. It saves you having to create multiple versions of the same question over and over. It allows you to have either a defined set of times that the same series of questions is asked to the end user, or to potentially have an infinite number of times that you could ask the same series of things over and over to the end user as many times as they need. So there are two ways to make repeat loops in A to J Author, and both have the same outcome. So you can either collect the number or of items or people first, so how many times do they have to go through the loop, or you can ask if there are any more items or people or whatever at the end of the loop. So the first way is how many you ask up front. The second way is asking if they need to go through the loop again at the end of the loop. Let's talk about the first way, the first one first. So this is collecting the number first. You use this one when your end user will know right away how many times they need to go through the series of questions. So for example, you're asking them how many children they have. They should know that up front right away. So you ask for the number up front. It's the first question of the loop. I call it the jumping off point, but it's not going to be repeated each time they go through the loop. The end user is only going to be asked one time how many times they have to go through the loop. But this question is where a lot of the initializing of the loop starts. So there are seven steps that you need to follow when you're using collecting number first as your repeat loop option. The first step is to create the set of questions that will be repeated. So you can do this on the Pages tab, which is the normal way, or we've made some map enhancements in the last six months or so, and on the Map tab, you can quickly add a series of questions and put in a little bit of information, uh, like the question, the question text on, that, on the Map page, so that les allows you to generate questions quickly as well. Either way, you create the set of questions that you want to be repeated. In my example here, I'm going to ask about um, children. So I'm going to ask for the child's name the first time, the first question. And I'm also going to ask about the child's birth date. So that's my series of questions here. Then step two is to create the counting variable. The counting variable tracks how many times the user has gone through the loop. The counting variable follows, though, a different naming convention than our typical variables. You can see here in the screenshot the arrows pointing to child count. To name counting variables, you capitalize each word and omit the space between the words, and you don't have the two-letter indicator at the end. So gener generally, a variable would be named something like child name last te, which tells me alphabetically all my name variables are together, first, last, middle, and te tells me that it's a text variable just by looking at it. So that's a normal way of naming variables. But with counting variables, generally the convention followed um, in the document assembly community is to have one word, child count, but child and count are capitalized, no two-letter indicator. You also want to make sure that your counting variable is a number. 
It has to be a number because it's holding a number value. And it should not be set to hold multiple values. There should be only one value held in an interview for this child's count. It doesn't need to be marked or tagged as uh, to hold multiple values. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second when we talk about other types of variables. The third step then takes us back to that jumping off question of how many. So it should have a field that collects a number variable, like for example, number of children and you. On that how many question, on the button that says continue, you'll choose the repeat option of set counting variable to one, and you'll include the counting variable you created in step two in that counting variable field on the bottom here. This initiates the count and tells A to J author that your user is going into a repeat loop. Then you set the destination for this button to the first, uh, um, whatever that first question is in your series of questions to be repeated. On each of those pages that are to be repeated, in my example here, child's name and child's birth date, you put the counting variable into the counting variable field in the question text section. This tags it then as a repeated question. Under this circle uh, field in my screenshot, you're gonna see the outer loop counting variable field as well. That's for nested repeat loops, which are a loop inside of a loop, literally a nested loop inside of a loop. You don't have to worry about that for regular repeats. The vast majority of you aren't going to use nested repeat loops. They're sort of the hardest thing that you ever are going to have to do in A to J author. And, but if you are interested in nested repeat loops, we have a training video on our YouTube channel. Again, youtube.com slash A to J author. Search for nested repeat loops. And we have a sample exercise on our website under the Learn tab. If you hover over it, there'll be an option for sample exercises. And uh, you can do the one on nested repeat loops to teach you how to do that. It requires some sort of a hack and it works. It's for nested repeat loops that are meant to pair with hot docs. So step six then happens on the last question to be repeated. In my example, it's the question about child's birth date. So I asked for the child's name. Then the second question in my loop was asking for their birth date. On this question, under the button section, on the continue button, you're going to select increment counting variable from the repeat options and put the counting variable in the counting var variable field under it. When the user presses continue, A to J author is going to increment the counting variable by one. So think about incrementing the counting variable as sort of adding a tally mark, indicating to A to J author which iteration of the loop you're in. Then the final step in this uh, way of doing a repeat loop is to create the logic that will test if your end user has gone through the loop as many times as they need to. So on that first how many question, you gathered number of children and you, so they told you how many kids they have. And in the logic, you're scripting a condition that tests if that counting variable equals the number of children. If it does, then you move the end user out of the loop and into the next question. In my screenshot, that's the question one dash, do you have any? Else, so otherwise, they, the, the, the number of children does not equal the child count. That means the user has not gone through the loop the correct number of times. Then you pass them back into the loop. So in this example, it goes back to the child's name question. This condition runs every time the end user hits the continue button uh, on that child's birthday question, and it reevaluates how many times the end user has done the loop against how many times they said they needed to go through the loop. So it's important logic, but it's fairly straightforward. And if you need to copy it, you can check it from the sample exercise as well. Let's talk about the second way to do a repeat loop in A to J author, which is asking to add more at the end. This asks the user directly if they want or need to go through the loop again once they've completed the series of repeated questions. So this is used when the user won't likely know upfront how many times they need to go through the loop. In my example here, it's asking about assets over $100. That's not generally something that an end user is going to know until they start making a list. They have to start thinking through all of the, their possessions and their assets and then going through and saying, yes, okay, I have one more. Yes, I have another. Another example can be um, bills. They might not necessarily know upfront how many bills they pay each month, but if they start making that list and going through it and checking it off in their head uh, and seeing what they've told you, then they can decide affirmatively or negatively if they have to go through the loop again.
This way only has five steps and no logic. Most of the process is a little bit more streamlined, and, but it's basically the same for either way you create repeat loops in the beginning. So again, step one, you create the series of repeated questions in the map or the pages tab. tab. Then you create the counting variable. In this case, it's asset count now. Remember, it needs to be a number and it should not be set to hold multiple values. Like we had that jumping off question with the first repeat loop example, we have one here as well. It's only asked once, but it's where you set the counting variable to one and tell A to J author what loop to initialize. This is what I call the do you have any question. So this only takes an end user into the repeat loop if they need to go into the repeat loop. You don't wanna send somebody through a loop if they don't actually have any assets over 100. So uh, the initializing of the loop happens on the yes button. On the no button, you would just branch the user to the next question that's not part of the loop. Again, on every question to be repeated, you tag it as part as being a repeated question by putting the counting variable in the counting variable field of the question text section. The last step is to ask that, do you have any more question? If they say yes, this means they wanna go back through the loop again and tell you about something else. So you increment the counting variable, you put the counting variable in the counting variable field on that yes button, and you set the destination to the first question of the loop again. On the no button, you just branch the end user to the next question that's outside the loop. There's nothing, you do nothing with the repeat options, you leave it set as normal. You can tell that a page has been tagged appropriately as a repeating question because on the pages tab, this little icon, it's a sort of a circle arrow and the word loop will appear at the end of the question uh, preview. So on the pages tab, it gives you a little bit of a preview of the name of the question and some of the text. And then at, on the far right hand side, it shows you sort of what's in the questions themselves, so text variables, number pick, logic, help, that's a learn more, and then this icon for a loop. So I have two sets of loops. It's covered by the uh, the blow up of the loop icon, but this is my child, the questions, the child's name and child's birth date. This is my section asking to add more about assets. So I have four questions in my interview that are in loops. Variables in a repeat dialog are used exactly the same way um, as you would other variables, except for the fact that they have to be tagged as holding a multiple values. In the variables tab, when you create the variable that is going to be part of a repeat loop, like here, child name, child birth date, asset name, asset value, whatever the variables are, are in those repeated questions, each one of these has to have a check mark that says check if multiple values. This allows A to J author to index the values in your variable. If you don't check it, then child two's information is gonna override child one, child three would override child two, and you're gonna end up with one set of children's information rather than three children. And it'll show up again to the end user because it'll look like they've re-answered or they've already given an answer when in fact they're trying to move on to a second child. So if you're seeing an answer you've already given when you're going through the loop again, it's likely that you don't aren't allowing multiple values. So make sure to check this little check box to make sure that it is filled in for only those variables in a repeat loop. The cool part about variable loops is that they index the different values. So behind the scenes, A to J author, for example, child name middle TE is holding both Catherine and Elizabeth. For first name, it's both Allison and Madison. And I can call out the value specifically for just for the first index or the second index if I wanted to specifically call out one of those children's names. And I'll show you how I use that. Then the only difference for the questions themselves is that you tag the question with the counting variable. So every question to be repeated needs to have the counting variable in this counting variable field of the question text to ensure that A to J author knows it's part of the loop. If you've done this correctly, that loop icon shows up on the pages list. So that's a way to check yourself um, as well. So in a repeat loop, I can call out all of the values held by that variable. So for example, here in my, do you have another asset to add question in the back here, I have a learn more that says, what assets have I told you about already? And I want to give them the list to help them make that list in their head. I want to tell them what they've already told me to check if they need to go again. So here I say, you've told me about your, and I, I tell A to J author to pull out all the values held by asset name TE. So the way to do it is you told me about your, and then the 
macro of percent sign percent sign bracket name of the variable close bracket double percent signs and this will pull out everything held in asset name te if i just wanted to call out one one value which i'll show you in the children example in a second i would do pound counting variable or pound one pound two if i knew which iteration of the loop they were in but this calls out everything but you can also call out just specific instances of values held by that counting by the repeating variable this is an example here in my children's question so on the first question i ask what is the child's name and then i use that specific child's name to in the second question to ask for their date of birth so what is double percent sign bracket child name first te pound child count close bracket double percent sign so each time I go through the loop, it's only going to pull out the value that is held by that instance of the loop that I am in. So the first time I go through, if I say it's Allison, um, then that's child one, and now, I'm, now it's going to pull out just Allison's name. Second time I go through, if it's a uh, second kid, then it's going to say, uh, what is Christopher's date of birth? Instead, it won't show both Allison and Christopher if I use this pound child count. If I didn't have pound child count, again, like the last example, it's going to show everything that's contained in child's name first, TE. So if you wanna practice these skills, we have a, a sample exercise just for repeat loops. So on our website, if you go to, if you hover over the learn tab, sample exercises to learn A to J author, you scroll down to uh, the repeat loop ones. It should take you about an hour to two hours to complete. It's one of um, our more middle to longer term sample exercises, but it will teach you how to create a uh, repeat loop both ways. And it will also teach you how to uh, do a repeat loop within the A to J dat text template. So it has, um, it is generally for more experienced authors. I wouldn't start with this interview if you've never done an interview before, but if you are learning or if you are looking to work on your skills on repeat loops, definitely try this one. Um, if you're new, brand new to authoring and you've never tried anything and you're just interested in how A to J author works, I would recommend the quick and easy automation. It takes about 30 minutes or so, definitely less than an hour. And you can have uh, an A to J interview and an A to J PDF document, whole situation, very simple, completed as well. You can always also email me, jessica at cali.org. Our next webinar is not the first Thursday of the month because in June we have our Cali conference, um, which is A to J Authors parent company. We hold an annual conference for legal education and legal technology, which I invite you all to attend as well. And so that pushes our, our new user webinar to the second Thursday of the month. So our next call will be June 10th at 11 central. There's a question about how you do repeats within a repeat. So nested repeat loops, uh, we talked a little about that, but there is a sample exercise for doing nested repeat loops right here. You can walk through um, the hack that was created by Bob Aubin actually um, several years ago, figured out a way to um, hack A to J author because we don't natively support nested repeat loops, but Hot Docs does. So there is a way to um, take repeat loops in A to J author, parse them into hot docs with a computation in hot docs um, so that they work together. So nested repeat loops. And there's also a training video on our YouTube channel about nested repeat loops. We are thinking about ways in which we could natively support nested repeat loops and multiple um, indexing of variables. So that is sort of in our framework. It, it does require this hack right now. Are there any other questions? Oh, okay, so there's another example or another question about um, what would be a good exercise to begin with. So the, the one I recommend that's, um, I call it the, I, want, I initially wanted to call it the quick and dirty automation because it's sort of a um, fast interview, but uh, we went with quick and easy automation. So it is, again, if you hover over the learn tab and go to sample exercises to learn A to J author, um, and then go down to quick and easy automation, and then the next one that I would work with, um, there is a one for learning hot docs. If you know you're going to be working with hot docs, this is an A to J interview with a hot docs backend. Or if you think you're going to be just an A to J author, you can learn how to automate just a text template or a PDF template. Those are the next two that I would start with. Okay, 
I'm not seeing any other questions or any other hands raised. So thank you all for attending and I will see you all again on June 10th. Thank you.